Yeah, welcome. Thanks for joining our TD presentations uh, at FMX 2022. My name is Volker Helsle. I'm the senior lecturer for the technical directing postgraduate course. And um, today we'll have two presentations from Lukas Kapp and Justo Senne. The technical directors are the people in a media production that um, tackle all the technical challenges, find solutions, uh, to these uh, and uh, don't be mistaken it's actually a very creative um, job with with a lot of opportunities to engage creatively and uh, usually they develop tools they define pipelines they take care of of uh, the look and um, um, and rendering styles that that are used they rig characters um, today we'll uh, start with Lucas who will give us insight into his work for rigging and simulating a visual effects creature. Uh, Justus, he will show us his own uh, game development and he was also involved in a LED production, in a LED virtual production in one of our studios and um, therefore he needed, uh, of course, a lot of skills in real-time graphics. He will also present you his uh, work for his own game development. Both students engage in their own research projects, which will be part of that presentation as well. So without further ado, let's get started with Lucas. Hi everyone, I'm Lucas Kapp and I'm currently studying technical directing in the second year. In this presentation, I will show you some of my work I've done in the last year. But before that, let me introduce myself first. So who am I? After finishing school in 2016, I started studying media design at the University of Applied Science and Arts in Hannover. During that time, I jumped back and forth between the different areas of the 3D pipeline and worked on several animated projects with fellow students. After a while, I realized that I mainly enjoy bringing characters to life, especially on the more technical side of character ethics and rigging. Since then, I mainly focus on this area, and the technical directing course here at Film Academy was a perfect opportunity for me to deepen my knowledge in it. One of my first projects I've worked on was Somnabul, a short film which needed a digital beast form for those two shots you can see here. I was responsible for the whole 3D part, except animation and the model was bought online, which also included textures and the fur. However, the asset still needed some preparation, since it was not ready for Dini yet, especially the fur, which was groomed in Maya, and the shading of the bee. For the week, I tried a new approach, by splitting the whole week into different modules that work on their own, and only the attributes that the different modules need from one another are then connected. This was a bit more work, but resulted in a way cleaner week, since everything had the same structure and changes could be made easily. I also heavily used the new matrix features in Maya 2020, which included the offset parent matrix to get rid of the groups that are needed to zero out controls, and the different matrix math nodes to replace the built in Maya constraints. In the end, the whole week was mainly using matrix math, which resulted not only in a cleaner outliner, but also in a faster week. For the swarm simulation, I received two different fly cycles from the animator, which you can see in the bottom left. I then added several offsets to those animations to get more variations and create more chaos in the swarm, which made it more realistic. The swarm itself was done with a particle simulation inside Houdini and was quite similar for both shots. The main motion was done with a curve that attracts and guides the different particles to the destination. This made it very art directable. To break up the swarm shape, I then added various forces like wind, drag and attraction. In the end, the orientation was calculated with some cross products so that the bee was always looking in the fly direction. Finally, here you can see a little breakdown of one of the shots. Mirage of the Sea was my main project in the last month. It's a short film with a photorealistic creature and I'm responsible for the whole rigging and muscle simulation part. Since it's still in production, I unfortunately can only show you some parts of the creature. But here you can see some of the concepts. The creature itself lives in the desert and is a mixture of a human, an ostrich, a crocodile and also several dinosaurs. It should have similarities to the male antagonist in the story. That's why it also has hair on top of its head that is similar to the one of the male actor. Since the design changed a lot over the months, I decided to completely script the wig. 
to be able to adjust to those changes and not restart from scratch again. For that, I've used my knowledge of my previous wig, the B, and split the wig again in different modules. I created a script for the base module that contains the base structure of all modules as well as other common features. Every module then inherits from the base class and adds the unique features of the module. The different modules will only get the already oriented skeleton as an input and create the whole wig function automatically. This meant that I only needed to adjust the skeleton to the model updates and rebuild everything to update the wig as well, which saved a lot of time during production. As the last step, the different control shapes get adjusted to a before custom created template, since adjusting those controls inside the modules would be quite cumbersome. The creature is mainly moving on all fours, but can also use its arms like a human. This meant that the arms needed to behave like a quadruped leg, but also like a human hand. To solve this, I add a biped quadruped switch to give the animator the best of both worlds. I've also written a script that automatically manages the biped pose to the quadruped one and vice versa. Since the creature should get the mass simulation in the end, it was important to not only include the skeleton in the wig, but also add anatomical features like the radius ulna twist, the patella movement or the scapular movement. Without those features, the mass simulation wouldn't feel quite right. For the face, I mainly use blend shape based on the different action units of the facial acting coding system. But since the creature mostly have only one expression, which is angry, I only needed some of the different action units to achieve this expression. For further tweaking, I added some joints that control different parts of the face, like the mouth or brows, to nail the final deformation. To stay parallel friendly, I used thin cluster stacking to prevent Maya from switching from GPU to CPU, which will result in big performance issues. Unfortunately, currently not all deformers are GPU friendly, like the shrink wrap I used for the flashy eyes, which resulted in some performance loss. The flashy eyes, which you can see on the right, were mainly done with the shrink wrap deformer, using the eye as the target and some joints to mimic the up and down movement of the lid when moving the eye. As I mentioned earlier, the film is still in production and I'm currently working on the mass simulation, especially the fat and skin. That's why I can only show you a turntable of the muscles. For the mass simulation itself, I'm using the Maya plugin Ziva VFX. Unlike other muscle solutions, Ziva needs the different muscles as geometry, which meant that we needed to model them first. Every muscle gets then attached to the cording bone or muscle with either fixed or sliding constraints. To control the contraction, I created a curve for every muscle. If the curve gets shorter, the muscle contracts. This allows me to isolate the movement that triggers the contraction. Besides working on different projects, the technical directing course also includes the scientific research project. For that, I've chosen again a topic related to rigging by trying to solve the so-called inverse wig problem, which occurs when mapping a skeleton back to the wig. Based on the work of the paper, Learning an Inverse Wig Mapping for Character Animation, I developed a toolset for Maya that maps animation data from skeletons to an arbitrary wig. It uses machine learning to learn the wig mapping to the system and after that it predicts individual wig attributes based on the animation data of the skeleton. I just started with this project so everything is still quite early development, but I can show you what I've got so far. I start off with a really simple cube wig with just control that translates the joint. In order to train the model, I need to generate data first. For that, I've written a simple script that puts random translation values on the control. I then export the x, y and z translation offset control and joint as CSV. I then use the joint values as input and the control values as my observation data to learn a Gaussian process regression model. Since I have three inputs and three outputs, the regression model needs to be a multitask one. For that, I'm using PyTorch with the G PyTorch library, which includes different Gaussian process models. Here you can see the trend model, one graph for each axis. The graph doesn't quite follow the observed data yet, but this is mainly because first, I've used a model that doesn't treat its outcomes independently, which for this case would be the better option, but not for the later one. And secondly, the parameters aren't tweaked yet. With the trained model, I can now export the animation data again as CSV and use those data on my model to predict the control values. I can then apply those predicted values to my control. Currently, this is a two-step process, but I plan to later integrate the trained model directly inside Maya to predict and map the data automatically. After the mapping, you can see that the blue joint is near the orange one, which was the goal. The model predicted the translation of the control correctly. However, due to the rough trend model, the difference between the ground truth and the prediction is still too big. But this and the addition of more complex wigs will be one of the next steps in the future development of this toolset. 
This concludes my presentation. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the other presentations here at FMX. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Justus Henne and I'm a technical director at the Film Academy Baden-Württemberg's Animation Institute. I'm a game developer and game designer as well as a technical artist. After studying media computer science, I moved to Ludwigsburg to work as a game developer. Shortly after that, I joined the Film Academy Baden-Württemberg. Most of the time I implement game systems and game mechanics, and as a tech artist I am the bridge between art and technology, taking care of rendering, shading and performance in real-time applications. And now I'm very excited to show you what I've been up to in my second year as a technical director at the Animation Institute. To start off, let's talk about the Artificial Deity project. A visual novel adventure game that boasts an anime art style mixed with a 2D lighting system and an immersive story. In this world, creatures are immortal, but the story unfolds as more and more people are starting to die and wither, which has been unprecedented and kicks off a tragic turn of events for our characters. As I am the technical director, I implemented the adventure visual novel style gameplay, and I made sure that our team can work together through source management control tools like Git for example as well as creating the 2D lighting for this project and lighting our different scenes. Another great project of last year was Awakening. Produced as part of the Set Extension Workshop in 2021, we were tasked with creating a short movie that uses the help of virtual production and an LED wall as a backdrop. As this needs to be interactive to the camera's position, the rendering is handled with the real-time Unreal Engine and then sent to the LED wall. Full-on virtual production like this came with a lot of challenges for us. Planning it was really hard as we had to adapt to a completely new workflow with new methodologies and new types of thinking. To do that, we built a paper prototype with a big TV as a backdrop to test our early ideas, camera angles and pans. During the shoot, it was very difficult to manage everything and have multiple Unreal instances work together and have the render performance be nice on the render node that sent all the images to the LED wall, as well as motion capturing on a big set, keeping it calibrated and precise all the time, or syncing our acting with content on the wall, there's a lot. In the shots that you've just watched, we can see that the blending with the LED wall works pretty well and our VFX team did a very good job of blending everything together. As a TD here as well, I made sure that our team can cooperate on files and progress together. This whole thing was a new experience for me and showed me the different thought processes that go into movie production and especially how to utilize virtual production to its full potential. Being part of the VP crew during the shoot was also very exciting and a completely new thing to me. For this and the following year, I will be focusing on my diploma project Miasma. A platformer adventure that features fast-paced gameplay within a more fantastical world and story about progress versus conservatism. This world is covered in a toxic gas called the miasma. Mastering this inhospitable environment is the end goal for the player as well as the protagonist. In this project I'm taking the role of the director and the technical director helping with world building, game development, and game design. The project features several interesting technologies. For example, a 2.5D environment with custom lighting shaders for all of our materials, and you can see some of those examples right here. As well as a 2D fluid simulation that we use to show our miasma with. Let me show you the current work in progress. You can see me changing around some materials here to change the look of the miasma. As well as our density and our velocity textures that run the fluid simulation in real time on the GPU. In Miasma, we're also going to have a procedural, target pose driven animation system. Which does bring me to my final project, the Scientific Research Project. 
I will be implementing a non-traditional procedural animation system. In the traditional animation workflow for games, all the animations are handcrafted. In more modern times, they are modified by procedural animations later on, like inverse kinematics, for example. But it is also possible to animate the entire character procedurally. I want to create a toolset that allows creators to easily animate entire characters with just a handful of target poses, leaving artistic control in our hand, but alleviating the workload that comes with animating entire clips. I'm gonna to try to achieve the three animation principles of anticipation, follow through and exaggeration by maths. For that, you're gonna to have to remember what a continuous function is, but don't worry, let me show you. On the left hand side, we can see a function that is not continuous, that has a sudden jump in value at position zero. But on the right hand side, we can see a function that is continuous in value and doesn't suddenly jump. This is a very solid concept for animation, as of course, we don't want parts of our animations to just jump around from one space to another, so we need some kind of continuity in there. But let me show you a problem. This is also a continuous function. It doesn't suddenly jump in value, but it does suddenly jump in velocity. First, we can see the velocity going down, and afterwards, we see the velocity going up. So, it would be nice to also achieve some kind of continuity in velocity as well. If this function, for example, would be mapped to an object, that will result in very sudden and jarring movement. So let's extend the idea of continuity not only to position, but also to velocity and acceleration. If we can manage to make these two continuous as well, that will result in animations that don't suddenly jump in position or velocity or, or acceleration. So how can we achieve this with math? If you remember derivatives of functions, essentially every function has a derivative, another function that shows the velocity of the original one. Interestingly, if we take the derivative of the first derivative, we result with a second derivative, which is acceleration. So the change of speed over time. So if we manage to make both derivatives continuous, we would have achieved our goal. So in our toolset, we would have to follow these steps. First, we would be creating some target poses for our animations, and then with an algorithm interpolate between them and let the algorithm simply enforce the first and the second derivative to be continuous. This algorithm is called cubic interpolation. From a data perspective, it is a little problematic as you can see here. For example, we have these five points and we can see how the cubic interpolation interpolates between them. And it is problematic because the cubic interpolation simply creates values that have never been there. But for our purposes, these values are simply there because the acceleration or the velocity was so high that our character would have to overshoot the values a little bit in order to reach its end target. So by this, we achieved some of the animation principles that I mentioned earlier. On the screen right now, you can see my very first work in progress implementation of cubic interpolation. And you can already see that it is much smoother than linear interpolation. With that, I'm going to say goodbye to you guys and thank you very much for listening. I'm happy to hand over back to my professor Volker. Yeah, thank you, Justus. Wow, very impressive um, presentations from, from Lucas and Justus here. I'm very proud of you. Thanks a lot for, for preparing and, and showing your work. So if you are interested in, in becoming a technical director, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, and, and, and drop an application for the next um, uh, study semester. You should have a background in computer science or similar, and um, there is a moderate student fee for non-EU students, so um, all that information uh, can be obtained from our website. Uh, please don't hesitate to, to get in touch with us, and um, we're really looking forward for international students. Um, we had some from, from Brazil, from Egypt, from Israel, from all over the world. It's really been, um, it's been a blast having them here. So if you're interested in, in knowing more about um, the uh, course, then get in touch with us and um, we'll talk. So thanks again to the presenters, Lucas and Justus, and um, see you at FMX.